means the entire internet is ablaze using the hashtag bring back our girls in reference to close to 300 girls that were abducted from the northern cape of nigeria on april the 14th but it is interesting to know that not even a bleep has registered on the internet or in the media in reference to the 59 boys that were slaughtered just the month before by the exact same terrorist group in the exact same area. I want you to know that um, we have to be keen enough to pick up the enemy's pattern because the enemy has a pattern of adversarial attacks. One of the things that has come to me is that the enemy, watch this, the enemy lacks imagination. The enemy lacks imagination. So it's easy to trace his steps because he keeps doing the same things over again. He just uses different people, but it's the same thing. He longs, hear me very carefully, he longs to destroy black boys, but he wants to detain black girls. What's worse is that we have become oblivious to both. The killing of the black male child has become so common that it no longer gives us pause. By virtue of the fact that just last weekend, 12 young men were killed in Chicago in one weekend doesn't even give us pause to say that we are in a crisis state as a people. Dr. Jawanza Kanjufu in his now classic work, The Conspiracy to Destroy Black Boys, gives us a clear account as to how it is the system is designed and built to destroy our boys before the fourth grade. By the fourth grade, in his follow-up book, uh, To Be Popular or Smart, he concludes, my dear friends, that here it is, that the same young black boys that do well in reading, math, and science, between the fourth and the sixth grade, they begin to slip. Not because they have intellectual deficiencies, but because they have opted whether or not they're going to be popular or smart. So in it is the state's designing of the penal systems, they begin doing projections of how many prison cells they're going to build based off of fourth and sixth grade math scores. You all are not listening to me today. The enemy in his attempt at diabolical chivalry won't outright destroy women as much as he will try to suppress their imagination. He will, in fact, try to obliterate the presence of males because he understands that if I take men out of the house, I can take the whole house. The Bible is very clear that unless you bind the strong man, you will not be able to get the house. So if you go back even from where it is that we are today, when it is the New Deal was offered up the only way a black family could receive food stamps or welfare, men had to be pushed out of the house. It was not that they did not have an affinity or an affection for their wives or their children, but the government set up such a structure in order for the children to receive aid, no father could be present. So there really ought to be a hashtag, bring back our fathers. In the absence of a black male presence, y'all not talking back to me, then the family is no longer defended. Why is this a problem? When a black woman comes to church, she has in fact a 50 to 60% chance of the whole family coming to church with her. But when a black man comes to church, it is an 85% chance that everybody is going to come. So now we come to churches that are just feminized with a church full of women but you got a mosque full of men it says that men are not not that they are not spiritual but they want a place of discipline and order and focus men do not want to come to church just for an emotional outpour of turn to your neighbor without giving me any instruction any direction or any information men are thinkers where women are feelers y'all are 
getting ready to miss this here. It does not say that women do not sing, but women are more emotional than men are. So a lot of neo-Pentecostal churches miss the move of God because they suggest if you are not shouting and screaming, you are not spiritual and you are not saved. That is not true. When it is that Jesus taught on the mountainside, men weren't running around shouting and lifting up hands, but they made up in their mind, when I leave out of here, I'm going to do different from my business, do different from my family, do different from my community. But because we have westernized our worship experience, everybody want to shout and sashay because we made the church comfortable for men not to be men, but to be sanctified sissies. So it says to us, how is it that you get to a place that I can love God, but no longer be a man? But God says I'm raising up real men that understand I do not have to disavow my masculinity in in order to embrace my spirituality. I know y'all don't like it, but I'm not supposed to be politically correct. I'm supposed to be biblically correct. And when you know the word of God, you understand there's a destroy our black men. When they cannot destroy black men, watch this, the next target is to go after black women. Let me see if I can help you very carefully. So the fastest growing prison population Population is no longer black men. The fastest growing prison population is young black girls between the ages of 18 and 35, not for violent charges, y'all ain't talking back to me, but for refusing to testify against their men. They figured out if I can't get the men, let me arrest the baby mama, let me arrest the kids, y'all ain't talking back to me, let me arrest whoever lives in the house. Well, if that is true, why does your investigation only stop at Green Mount but doesn't go to Green Spring. That, that, there's got to be something that suggests the law has got to be empirical. Look at your neighbor say they're after our daughters. And so you'll notice the attack now has shifted on young black girls. So we've got a greater spence, watch this, we have a greater number of young black lesbians than we do of young black male homosexuals. Y'all ain't talking back to me. And they're becoming younger and younger in the eighth grade, in the sixth grade, in the ninth grade. But I came to tell the devil, you are a liar. You will not be able to hold our daughters back. The attack now has shifted from our sons to now to our daughters. Because the enemy understands I cannot kill a black woman because this goes outside of the bounds of warfare. The only thing I can do to a woman, watch this, if I cannot kill her, is to kill her imagination. So most black women who are in this sanctuary will not testify to you that they have suffered more emotional abuse than physical abuse. They have gone through so much in their life that tried to mess with their mind. They had to fight just to have an imagination. The enemy wants them just to settle and maintain and pay bills and just take care of kids. But God said there's a greater dream over your life than paying BG&E, student loans, visa, and wiping a baby's diaper. There's an anointing over your life and I refuse to let the enemy take your imagination why is the enemy after black women's imagination and dreams be seated please I want to show you something very quickly why is the enemy after black women's imagination and dreams last week I posted something on Instagram I want to show with you now, this is what God gave to me here it is little girls with dreams become women with vision Right, Y'all just missed that. Let me give it to you again. Little girls who have dreams become women with vision. Every sister ought to be writing that down right now. Little girls with dreams become women with vision. Every super bad sister in the sanctuary, would you say it out loud? Little girls with dreams become women with vision. 
All right, watch this. So the enemy will attack a woman in her season of dreams to defer her from becoming a woman with vision. Every woman in this sanctuary can remember a life-defining moment that happened to you that made you adjust or dummy down your dream. Y'all not talking back to me. Mama got sick. You had to take care of the family. Children came prematurely. Somebody broke your heart. Promises were never fulfilled. Friends stabbed you in the back. The scholarship didn't come through. You had to be taken out of private school. You moved to a different location. You kept getting emotional setback. For you to have a dream with everything you've been through in your life throws in the face of the adversary to let him know you tried to kill me but you didn't kill my dream. I, I need every sister in the sanctuary. If you've been through hell and back but you still got a dream you ought to give God glory. They can't, watch this, they can't kidnap your dream. They cannot kidnap your dream. They cannot abduct your imagination. Let's go to Matthew 27. And in Matthew 27, Jesus is on trial with Pilate, and in the midst of the court hearing, his wife sends a note. And here's what the note says, have nothing to do with that man. He's innocent. He hadn't done anything. You don't want blood on your hands. The Bible says, my dear friends, that a man that finds a wife finds favor with the Lord. Most men in the absence of a good woman only has good ideas. Y'all okay. okay. just missed that. I said, all right, let me give it to you again. I said most men, if they are absent of having a good woman in their life, all they have is good ideas. But in the company of a godly woman, an idea becomes a dream. All right. Any man, watch this, any man who does not have a wife, watch this, is running on grace. I'm going to let that sink in. Any man who does not have a wife is running on grace because you don't get favor till the wife comes. All right, that, uh, an anointed woman of God, I'm getting ready to help, brothers, I'm getting ready to hook you up, an anointed woman of God isn't dreaming about a man. An anointed woman of God, watch this, is not dreaming about a man. Watch this, an anointed woman of God dreams for her man. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking back to me? So when she's really connected to who you are, she begins to dream about what she sees you accomplishing, what she sees you becoming, and you with your silly self go run off with a side chick who don't have no anointing. Here is the problem with Pilate. Be seated. The problem with Pilate, watch this, is the problem with a lot of men. The problem with Pilate is the problem with a lot of men is he didn't know what he had. Had Pilate listened to the woman he had, y'all ain't talking back to me, his life would have been better. 
because he didn't listen to the woman of God he ended up losing his job ended up in exile ended up being kicked out of the palace and it ended up committing suicide if you got enough confidence to not be insecure and threatened about the woman God sent you when she speaks she is speaking from the voice of God for what she sees over your life the gospel is free it's just expensive to get it out God has challenged me and compelled me Jamal you are a part of a local church but you ought to have a global impact technology affords us to do that kind of ministry and I need you to be an investor in it I'm telling you this investment is going to reap a harvest around the world God is using us to reach people who would have never stepped foot in church would you kindly prayerfully consider sowing a seed into our ministry so that all over the diaspora young adults might be able to find Jesus Christ and have their lives revolutionized if you are not a part of the solution you're a part of the problem be an investor the emotional moral deficit in our community is coming to an end because of the investment in this kind of ministry God bless you and please please help us help the gospel get out Be seated, please. Be seated, please. Every sister just elbow another sister. Say he should have listened. Every brother, would you tap another brother and say, I should have listened to her. God help me. Old saints, y'all forgive me. But I got to tell you, these hoes ain't loyal. You got to find somebody. Uh, all right, be seated, please. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Uh, be seated. All right, I gotta go. Pilot, watch this. Pilot lives in conflict. Why? Pilot is living in conflict. Because he washes his hands, he washes his hands, watch this, and then signs the death certificate. He could have put a, a curve, watch this, on the whole movement of woman suffrage. Women could have got the right to vote earlier. Y'all ain't talking back to me. They could have had the right to own property sooner. If he in that one moment would have listened to what the woman of God spoke over his life, trying to help him. He was of no benefit for her. She just wanted to see him in his rightful place with God. Y'all ain't talking back to me. You done found the right one when they are not, y'all ain't talking back to me, into your car, your clothes, or your income. But they got a desire to see you in the will of God. That's when you know you found somebody who's anointed. I'm going to say this to you. I'm feeling some hateration. I want to say this. I want to say this. And I want you to remember, I told you this. You will regret not listening to the woman God sent you. I can really just shut the book and give the benediction. You will regret not taking heed to the word God sent you through that woman. Let's go to verse 19, please. She said, watch this, let him go. He's innocent. I've suffered much because of the dream I had the night before. The dream was at night, but it haunted me the next day. Something is significant when the dream is so profound that God won't let you forget it. 
God, God uh, will shock you in a dream where you can wake up screaming, wake up in cold sweats, wake up trying to calm yourself down, wake up sitting on the side of the bed, wake up and, and can't go back to sleep. But I, th I think you all are missing the significance as to why Matthew gives us this detail. He gives us this detail in Matthew 27, verse number 19. Why, Pastor? Because Matthew, of all of the disciples, is of the entire group the most devout Jew. He's a devout Jew. And so he inserts this into the narrative. Why? Uh, because of who's dreaming. The wife of the governor. So he inserted it in an encrypted message um, because he's trying to send a message to the 21st century church. People who shouldn't even like you are getting ready to dream about you. God, y'all ain't talking back to me. People who've been plotting ways to destroy you. He getting ready to mess up their sleep. Folk who've been spreading rumors they knew weren't true. He's getting ready to put his fist down their throat. Oh God, I can't hear nobody. God, 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 God says, I'm, I'm getting ready to make unlikely characters toss and turn. Uh, because the anointing on you is so heavy. God help me that even demons will see that you are part of God's elect. God, I can't hear nobody in here. Tonight, your supervisor gonna dream about you. God, I can't hear no worshipers. The nastiest co-worker on your job is gonna wake up in cold sweats. Don't touch them, they're innocent. For those of you who haven't been under attack, God help me. If you just talking about phone bills, God ain't worried about that. If you, if you just talking about little promotions, that ain't God's business. But now that the devil been arming himself to try to give you one last jab to wipe you out of here, I dare you to just pull on your neighbor. Say they better not think about killing me. I am God's chosen. I, I am God's anointed one. If there was no anointing on my life, it wouldn't matter what they did to me. But touch not my anointing.